All right, we're going to start a match reviews for this evening. For this evening, our first match comes to us from Tia Nax. Oh, sorry if I said that wrong. Uh, you have 1260 hours, so a little bit past that zone that I expect most people to have their macro and micro fundamentals of Dead by Day under, uh, under their belt. So you should be able to have fairly short chases, be able to put pressure on the, the whole map and gens fairly well at this point. Uh, you are playing the Xizomorph, which is somebody that I am an expert in, so perfect person to ask with the guide and all that wonderful stuff. You're on Rancid Abattoir, which is the best corn map for Xeno. Best corn map typically in general for most killers. Um, so that's going in your favor. So let's take a look at your add-ons and your perks. So you're using Ashes, Innards, and Ripley Swatch. These are some pretty underwhelming and poor choices um ripley's watch while it may on the eyes seem like initially like a good learning perk because it cleans up the turret after you get burnt out um it teaches a bad habit in the sense that like you learn to let yourself get burned out of your crawler mode in order to get value out of it which is a bad habit you should be ideally staying in crawler mode as xenomorph as much as possible uh, so this encourages you to not do that. Also, in addition to this, uh, flame turrets do have ways of breaking on their own uh, when they expend charges, when they don't get repaired after expending those charges. Um, they have ways of breaking on their own. So adding a third way to do this that is detrimental to you doesn't make sense. If you're going to run another brown add-on in the slot that's more of a learning add-on, do overmorph or do serial rations. Um, those can kind of be new traps if you stick to them too long, but those are better learning perks for a brown add-on. In terms of Ashes Innards, it's not... It's, Ashes Innards is one of those add-ons where it's like not technically bad, but it's underwhelming, especially compared to other add-ons in its own rarity. Lambert Star Map is another yellow add-on, and it's one of the best add-ons you can run on Xeomorph. So the fact that you would put Ashes Innards in this slot over... over uh, Lambert Star Map doesn't make sense. Typically with the Xeomorph, you want to run two of three combinations or two or three combinations two or three add-ons doesn't matter which combination that you use you can use lambert star map emergency element or self destruct bolt you can do double turret you can do one of the turret ones and the vault one doesn't matter all are good picks um in terms of your build your build is i see an undetectable theme you're going for undetectable and unfortunately if you do not know this this is where i have to burst your bubble the flame turrets come with a motion sensor that expands for 41 meters and kind of acts as a separate terror radius that can never be turned off and i do mean never be turned off undetectable doesn't turn off oblivious doesn't turn it off nothing turns it off it's actually one of people's biggest gripes about the current form of xenomorph in in dead by daylight is that despite being a stealthy character inside their ip they they get hard countered in their stealth by the turrets um so undetectable and oblivious are not good status effects on xenomorph and you have geared an entire build towards getting the undetectable status effect as much as possible so yeah i think that speaks for itself as being kind of subpar so yeah let's take a look at the game seems like you're on the wrong server because you are red barring and i would imagine if you pulled up why did you see the footfalls and leave you do that Oh, I went too far back. Too far back! Yeah, you get the footfalls on your screen. You get the little orange indicator, but you just kind of, like, drive past them. Whenever you get this orange indicator on your screen, even if you don't see the footsteps above you, like, where they're aiming, it gives you the arrow to tell which direction the footfalls are coming from. Unfortunately, you just kind of drive by it. That These orange footsteps and orange arrows directing you to the footsteps are survivors. But you just kind of drive by it for some reason. Yeah, you even think about going up there and you just don't. I don't know why. I don't know why you do that. Yeah, you just wasted some time there for a little reason. Break your turrets. Break your turrets the moment you see them. That one's literally deactivated. That, like, literally, that is the safest time to break a turret because it is quite literally deactivated. Every time you pop out of the uh, control stations, the, the turrets go on cooldown. They, they can't do anything. So break them while you while they're in that deactivation state before they come back alive. You're just gonna make that burn you out later. There's no especially in a main building, this is an area of high traffic. If the turret is placed in like a really, really bad area, look at this. See, you had to come back and break it anyway. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You had to come back and break this anyway. So the fact that you ignored it there did nothing for you except hamper you. This is exactly what I'm talking about. 
don't record i get stomped that's why a lot of like um like features of having like um like oh i can recall the gameplay in the last 10 minutes is helpful oh you can see that stuff Sorry, I was looking away, so I didn't want to miss that. I agree with not having a down yet and not wanting to take a chase at Chak very early on. It's just that you don't know where anybody else is, so it could be kind of sketchy. Thankfully, you know to get into a tunnel here to try and use the built-in info. I do like the idea of not wanting to take a chase at a strong loop early on. A lot of our survivors, a lot of killers make that mistake. Good. Why not commit there? Okay. You go back. I thought you were going to leave. <laughs> you looked like you were going to run away from the chase. I was like, hey. You gotta gotta break your turrets. When you do not have your crawler mode, you're 115 alien lizard with hand. You wouldn't play trapper without his traps. You wouldn't play wraith without ever co a cloaking. You wouldn't play billy without his chainsaw. So why are you playing Xemorph without his power? Why are you willingly let that happen? There is so much talk in the, in the alien or the people that try Xenomorph in the in the Dead by Daylight community. They go, "Well, the turrets are annoying," but like shit like this happens all the time. Where like literally you make zero effort to break the turret and go, "Bro, why did the turret do that? Turrets are dumb." I'm not saying you're doing that, but I'm saying this is like a perfect example of where a lot of people would go, "Oh, well, the turrets are so oppressive." It's like you made zero effort to break it and keep your power. So of course you're going to end up chasing this 115 killer with no power. Of course. You're going to try to get some undetectable here. Keep in mind as well that the hurts do rat you out, so not something that is ideal. He went into the loop. Why'd you hit him there? Why did you not hit him there? Why did you wait? Remember, you have to break that because uh, Ripley's Watch only works when it breaks you out of your power. So it's not going to pop on its own. Yeah, you lost again. You've spent so much time messing around and getting burned out of your power that you're like, why would you not tail attack there? Why did you wait? Why did you wait? By the way, that thing that's showing up right here, you guys can't see it because it's chat. That's a scam. Don't click that. Don't click that. That's that's a scam. That person that just messaged you saying free stuff there, that's a scam. Don't don't touch that. They use that to take your account once you click on the link. When you're aiming the tail attack, aim center mass. So the reason you miss that is because you aim at like her legs. The tail attack kind of phases through her. When you're in this situation where you're aiming with the tail attack, aim from like their head down to like their butt. Aim in this like little circle zone. It's called center mass. Don't aim at their legs because most of the time it'll go through them because you start high, but then you end up like trying to go down near her like knee kneecap lower area. You just miss as a result. Aim center mass. I know it's kind of weird because a lot of killers in DBD, it's more beneficial to aim at the legs, like Pinhead, for example. But you know, it's the opposite. Totally legit pop up, yeah. You know what's funny, Ghost? I really wanted to play a Chucky game for you today, but then I remembered. <laughs> I remember the character is just busted right now. So could not do that. So sad. Yeah, you're, you have two gens for one hook, which is not ideal. You are far behind in pressure. Typically throwing somebody in basement, unless you plan to defend it, isn't the best thing in the world. I think this is okay because it's near uh, a really far along gen. So you probably will be sticking around a fair bit, but more Xeno Gaming, you can join us again. One of us. One of us. I notice you also don't strafe. With the Xenomorph's tail attack, you can move from right to left, left to right to uh, extend your hitbox. 
and cover the whole area. Obviously, if it hits collision, it stops. That's not an issue that Nemesis has, but it's an issue that you have. But I haven't really seen you being like strafing to try and cover as much area as possible. You're just going for like these single shots, which is why they're like they're just barely dodging you sometimes because you're not covering as wide of an area as you could be. Got a mind game to got on there, but you get him either way. Oh, look right here. If you never got bugged like that in a severe way, I'd probably just play Slinger. I'll just kind of sling him in. If you're in a situation like that where you're at like the max range, here's the deal. So like the most ideal way to deal with flame turrets is to launch and hit them, right? Because not only do you recover 0.3 seconds quicker from an M1 than you do from Xeomorph's tail attack, but also you don't suffer the movement speed penalty that comes with missing a tail attack, which includes when you hit the turrets. But if you're in a situation like this where you didn't quite know where the flame turret is and you have to spin, turn around and finally realize what the turret is, Without any of, like, Lambert Star Map, without Emergency Helmet, you don't have enough time to really, like, go lunge it afterwards. Because you've already been under the effect of the flame charges for, like, like a few, like, 0.3 seconds already. So, you've kind of, like, lost that, uh, that ability to lunge if you don't notice where it is immediately. Uh, which is why Emergency Helmet's really good, because of that extra 0.3 seconds. So... Yeah, if you ju if you like know where a turret is and you see it straight ahead of you, you can go for the lunge. But without uh, any like anti turret add-ons, and you, you just barely noticed where it was like last second, you probably needed to tail attack it just to be safe. I like the choice not to dry kick there because all of your perks that would give you value are on cooldown. It doesn't really make sense. It would essentially be a dry kick. How do you do that? You had two people right there. How do you do that? You had two people right in front of you. You had the injured Bill and then you had whoever hook saved them. But like, you just kind of like, let them go? You had a really good situation there. Now those two are just going to go heal. I don't know why you just like let them away for free. You let him away for free to go get perk value. Okay, let me explain something here to you. What? It's one of those things that, like, you probably didn't realize at the moment, but you're going to hear this loud, and you're going to be like, bro, what, did, what was I thinking? So you're telling me that you had two survivors right in front of you, one injured, one not, and you chose to not chase them so you could go kick a gen to get undetectable just so you could go inside the tunnels, which also give you undetectable. So you avoided pressuring two survivors to go get a status effect, to go to an area that naturally gives you that status effect for free 99. Oops. You could have just done this earlier. You chased him off, fuck, but you didn't. This is the easiest time to break hurts. When the, if they're on the way to a hook like that, just smack him. It literally costs nothing as long as you are like the hook is really close like this. And you're not like at the edge of your your carry limit, which is six point five grunts, by the way. Um. In the choke animation for any character that's choke animation vecna dracula as well um but you just kind of like don't break it for some reason That's just a hard shot to hit. And sometimes they phase that out. Sometimes, like, based on... Like, sometimes that shot's not possible. 
That's one of the complex things of a Seamorph and other like range attack characters that have like particular don't ever don't ever stop your momentum when you're doing something like that. Don't ever stop your momentum when you're taking a shot. I would argue that with like any range killer. Like you always want to keep moving, keep grooving. There's never a situation where you should be like stopping in place in the middle of a shot. I was saying something before that. And then you drop chase the person that you were after. You put so much emphasis on perk value that honestly, like, you drop a lot of really crucial chases just to get perk value. And the perk value is a status effect that isn't even good on your character. Which is, like, not ideal. I don't know. He got so greedy there. I don't know why he's like, oh, well, I'll stick around and get the flashlight save. That was really greedy. You're probably not going to be able to stop this from popping, but it may waste more of the time. If you can get this slug really quick, that'd be great, but I can see how... Uh, you got lucky there, shooting that background player. The balls to walk back under a pallet with a survivor right next to you. Don't ever do that again. Don't ever do that again. I'm gentle parroting you now. Don't you ever do that again. You were asking to pounce on doing that. That was extremely risky. Don't ever do that. It worked out this time, but that is a bad habit. You've also spent so much time this match in particular defending that gen. That, like if you had just like had more like macro presence instead of just defending one gen, you probably would have been way better too. Next fanny, thanks so much for the uh, follow. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well today on this fine Monday. You know, somebody dead at two gens is pretty awesome. It's good for you, but you don't know how much progress they have on the other gens, so... Yeah, let's say. It may seem like you're in a good spot, but it's like you're... You don't know what's, how far the game is on the other two gens. They're probably on that gen that you've kept kicking this whole game. Your favorite match is what we're doing them right now! Woo! You're in the middle of one! <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. We're doing a Xeno match review for, uh, for me. Yeah, you need to stop aiming low with your tail attack. That's why you're missing so much. Aim center mess. It is the right choice to go after her here. To lucky me. <laughs> I think it's so funny because, like, numerically, the match reviews do so poorly. Like, they're my worst series on the channel. But, like, people love them so much that I would never stop. They're like, thank you. I learned stuff I didn't know. I'm like, oh, yeah. Got you. They're doing the right thing here by greeting this gen. It's so close already, and you're about to run out of kicks for it that, like, as long as they do it intelligently... It should be fine, but it looks like they're not healing up, which is going to make it not fine. Every day is a school day. I still learn stuff all the time. I didn't know. I actually finished the guide without having the numbers for Xeno's uh, slowdown uh, when they get hit by a turret in crawler mode because they don't get hit anywhere else in terms of speed debuff from the turrets, only in crawler mode. So I actually didn't have that in the guide. Um, I didn't know that crows don't get disturbed in crawler mode until like a couple months ago. I learn new stuff every day. New about stuff that you should theoretically know the most about. I need to look over there for a second. Doesn't serve crows? Nope, sure doesn't. So it makes perks like spies, language touch, way better on them. Because you get way more uh, activations. Why do you just leave? You leave chase like nobody's business. I don't know why you do it. 
You like don't want to stick and chase ever. There's no uh, killer instinct, so they weren't nearby. Yeah, so you just left chase with somebody you had dead to rights for like no reason. You didn't break the turret box? It does it naturally. If you heard, if the turret box is open and you crawl through, it breaks it. It also does that like the moment a survivor uh, opens the box too. It's a very rare interaction that doesn't happen too often, but it is there. And that is something I got actually. Stop aiming low and stop, and you need to start strafing. Like your, your life would have been so much easier. Now I learned something to see. Every day is a cool day. That's one you don't see very often because typically unless you interrupt somebody mid grab and the case is open, like usually the scenarios, they open a case, they get interrupted, they run away and you smack it manually, right? You're not like crawling in there. And the odds of you crawling out of a control station the moment somebody grabs a turret also fairly low, so it doesn't happen too much. But it is possible. I would say just chill here. Will's not going to be able to do a full hook stages worth of a gen. Well, depends on how much progress is out there. If they have progress on another gen, potentially. But regardless, I still think this is the better play than searching around for him. You don't want him sneaking in, getting her, and getting away for free. That'd be a much worse scenario than you know, losing the final gen. Way more risky. I do not enjoy how you're not really looking at Shaq. Okay, good. He makes a noise bubble, thankfully. I was like, the fact that you weren't really looking at Shaq there was kind of scary, but luckily he's like forever away, so it doesn't matter. Did you get in the locker here? He was just hoping he could squeeze that out, but he didn't have enough time, like I said. That would put you in a rough situation, so I can kind of see why, because like, if you, um, if you get in a situation like that, where like, um, you get the last gen done, even if you're the last survivor, you have to make the killer patrol the doors and look for Ash, which is kind of obnoxious. But I can I can see what his his mindset was with that. Oh, you're not going for the finisher mark? I mean, I guess you could be putting somewhere more scenic, but theoretically, I think he already does that. There's it. Yeah. All right. So in terms of your main takeaways, uh, thankfully most of this was. Uh, mistakes you were making which sounds scary but realistically that gives you more control and more things you can do to make things better uh, first off you need to absolutely deal with your turrets you ignore your turrets like a bad like a bad habit and that's why i'm, I'm gonna recommend you absolutely take off ripley's watch because i think that's part of what's encouraging you to ignore your turrets like well if it knocks me on my power i just break them anyways which you know is teaching you a bad habit to just ignore turrets which you shouldn't be doing and there's plenty of times in this game where you would have ended the chases so quickly if you weren't constantly spending it outside of your power so make sure you're breaking your turrets as soon as possible um second for your tail attack you need to strafe so don't just go for single shots try to move left and right while you're aiming to spread your hitbox as far as possible and also you need to aim center mass you need to aim at the middle of the body um because you were aiming at the floor and i there was at least like seven tail attacks that you missed because you were aiming so low to the ground that the tail attack was just kind of like in the ground and not the survivor so aim higher aim higher um finally uh undetectable oblivious status effects not great on xenomorph because the motion sensors on the turrets rat you out so realistically, even though you were good at upkeeping your undetectable status effect, it really wasn't doing a whole lot for you because uh, survivors were just able to appear on because of the turrets. So you would have been much better off with perks that actually synergize with your character. 